Hi guys, welcome to what is only the second ever episode of the Stephen Frank podcast. I've been thinking of a few names. Uh, Steve, what do you think of We Are Blue and Neutral? Yes, we are Chelsea diehards, we bleed blue, but we also love football. We love football first before we we decided to to become Blues fans. That was uh, for me probably back in 1996 when I first saw Gianfranco Zola, and that was it. The little magician, the little Italian magician was so magnificent to watch. I, after I watched him once, I didn't want to look at... I decided Chelsea was my team. Not because of the way Chelsea played, but because of the way Zola played. And uh, this this episode was not supposed to be about uh, Zola and my blue affiliations, but we promise... We promise to always give you great content, neutral content. Steve, what do you think about blue and neutral? Uh, you'll tell. Let me know about that. But this episode is supposed to be a preview, a Champions League preview of Atletico Madrid versus Manchester United. It's Wednesday, the twenty third of February. It's almost uh, mid. It's almost one p.m right now so we still have uh quite a number of hours before kickoff and i'd like to talk about two teams that are in free fall i think atletico madrid are in free fall uh, both both teams are going through a really patchy period for both of them but at the moment atletico madrid are we was uh the a couple of I think it was last week they lost to bottom side Levante at home, which was unexpected. I don't know. I don't know what to make of Atletico Madrid. They have been a very, very good team for the past 11 years, ever since Diego Simeone uh, was in charge. And they've always been like a scary prospect for anyone who wanted, who came up against them. They were very unfortunate to, during the best periods, to come up against uh, Real Madrid. Uh, between 2014 and uh, around 2017, that was, the, they, that was the best time they had. That was the best possible chance they had of ever lifting the Champions League. But ever since then, they have been a force to record with Chelsea played them. Uh, last season, it wasn't as difficult as expected because uh, of the reputation that Atletico carry across Europe. But Chelsea made, in all honesty, made easy work of Atletico Madrid. And most people are saying, from the people I've talked to, that Manchester United, despite their poor form, might just actually do the same against them. Uh, it's hard to argue against that kind of argument, given uh, what comprises of Atletico Madrid currently. They have lots and lots of uh, forward-minded players, for strikers, attacking players that are not in form. <laughs> uh, a few of us will know something about that. Luis Suarez is not the Luis Suarez of Barcelona or Liverpool anymore. He was very good last year, but he's tailing off. I think age is catching up with him. They have uh, Yao Felix, who has largely underwhelmed ever since he moved. Uh, he made the move to Atletico Madrid. Anton Griezmann, I don't think, uh, is, is fit enough for this game. Carrasco is out suspended. Um, Thomas Lema, same as uh, Joao Felix, lots of expectations when he was first signed, but hasn't proved to be a good signing overall. They have uh, Cunha, 
and uh, the best player according uh, alongside uh, Carrasco in the absence of, Gris of Griezmann has been Correa. Who Diego Simeon seems not to like to play him regularly, but he usually comes up with the goods, especially with last minute winners this season. He, to me, he's been the best player for Atletico Madrid alongside Carrasco this season. Griezmann started really, really well, but unfortunately, is off injured, and Atletico Madrid's form has gone down the same, same, same way. They're still a formidable side. Uh, as usual, uh, what's, a side doesn't change its colors overnight. So I think they might they, they will be well prepared. It'll be tough. They'll be tough to break down. I kind of see them uh, having a little bit more position against Manchester United because uh, the Manchester United version of this season, they let you play. It's easy to play against them. It's easy to play through the midfield. But why I think um, Manchester United will be better, will slightly have the edge of Atletico Madrid is because I think Man United's attack is slightly better than Atleti's at the moment. Actually, it's not slightly. It's much better than Atletico Madrid's at the moment. Uh, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo who has been a thorn in the side of Atletico Madrid, especially during those uh, the the treble years where they won the Champions League uh, three times in a row, the unprecedented, and uh, even in La Liga. I think uh, I just think uh, Diego Simeone looks at Cristiano Ronaldo. Is uh, the sight of Cristiano Ronaldo is sick of him. Even after Ronaldo went to left Madrid and went to Juve. Still, he knocked out Atletico Madrid the following season. So, uh, maybe normal service will resume and uh, Atletico Madrid will fall just short. I'm looking at the the way they played against Liverpool uh, in the group stages. <clears throat> they played really well, but they didn't have the cutting edge in the final third. They controlled the ball really well. But Liverpool, Liverpool are just too good. Uh, the front three of uh, Firmino, Firmino, Salah, and uh, and Mane was just was just too much for Atletico. And I think even uh, it would be difficult. It would be difficult. Having said that, I think Man United are not going to win today's. The first leg at the Metropolitana, most likely it will be a draw. That's what I'm calling. But they will win the return leg uh, at all t at when the game goes back in two weeks' time at Old Trafford. What Atletico need to do is not uh, concede a lot of goals. Uh, the reason I say this is because I think Atletico Madrid will just have enough enough to hold out for a draw because of the experience they have throughout the team if you look throughout the team uh, through uh, Jan Oblak um, from Jose Maria Jimenez uh, Hamoso uh, Vasalico uh, and uh, I think Vasalico has greatly declined since the 2018 World Cup so there's a gap there's a bad uh, they they have a weakness uh, at at the right back right back position, especially after losing uh, Kieran Trippier to Newcastle's riches. Um, I think I think they should play Marcos Llorente there, who who did really well when uh, when in the absence of Trippier, but uh, Vasalico has been terrible. Koke is an ever present, and Luis Suarez and uh, Yao Felix will always carry a threat. But uh, the team looks uh, really short. I, but I still say they can hold on for a draw, and then I think Man United will batter them at Old Trafford. 
Pogba is back for Man United on the United side, and uh, Varane, who I don't think uh, has lived has lived up to expectations ever since he joined United. He's not been helped by uh, Maguire calamity. Almost, almost every game is having a really, really terrible time this season. On the flip side, as I, as I mentioned, Pogba is back for them. And a question for you, Steve. Uh, would you take Pogba? He hasn't signed a contract. He's willing to, of course, uh, PSG, Juve, and Real Madrid are always looking at Pogba. But he's not signed the United extension. And it's, last week it was reported that he's willing to listen to offers from other English teams. So my question to you is, would you take Pogba at Chelsea? Uh, I... I, I I think I would. I really think I would. Uh, but give me your reasons why not or why why you would. Uh, up front for United, as uh, previously mentioned, Ronaldo. Uh, Marcus Rash- uh, Rashford is in and out of form. I don't know what's up with him this season. Uh, Sancho is slowly beginning to come into the fore in the last uh, few weeks. He's been the the best the best attacking player, but I think United or Rangnick is not using their most potent weapon side from Ronaldo, who is Edinson Cavani. Whenever I see Edinson Cavani on the bench, I'm happy because he wreaks havoc whenever he plays. Um. Give me your thoughts on that. Tell me what you think, how it's going to go. I think it's going to be, if I had to call it, uh, I'd say it's going to be a 1-1 one, one draw. And the second leg, as I've said as, as I've said earlier, United should win comfortably. Uh, this is not my immediate thought when uh, the draw was made. I think back in December. Uh, Atletico are in pretty good form. Man United was struggling. The Knights, vice versa. Ragnick's uh, charges have... It hasn't been spectacular, but it's not been as bad as it was in the final days of uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's reign. Uh, they are nicking games uh, here and there, but they're drawing a lot of games. But they're not conceding as many, apart from uh, Sunday's game against Leeds, where they conceded twice. So, uh, tell me what you think about that. Yeah, so I set up my preview as Ronaldo versus Suarez, but it turns out that Suarez is starting on the bench. So, um, my prediction was completely wrong. There, yeah, but anyway, good points, Frank. I think even the most diehard United fan will say that they have been mediocre. Um, Atletico Madrid, as well, have been very poor, like you said. And this is not even a diss, but I think it's just the battle between who is less mediocre. Um, Atletico Madrid are playing at home, so I feel they are under the most pressure to perform. I can't believe you dismissed Ronaldo, especially after what you know he's always been doing to Diego Simone and um, Atletico Madrid. Um, I believe the last time Atletico Madrid played uh, a Ronaldo team, it was Juventus. You know, Ronaldo came up clutch and scored three uh, three goals, a hat trick. I mean, granted, he's much older now, but um, you know, the bigger the stage, the brighter his light shines. So I'm not overlooking Ronaldo one bit. Um, what else? It's amazing how well my mind has adjusted to no away goal rule, uh, which I feel forces Atletico to care less about conceding and focus more on actually winning the game. Uh, granted, it's not their style to go all out and play, but I was really, really impressed that one time in uh, I think 2020 when they played uh, Liverpool and Morata and Lorente were 
uh, fantastic. Um, Morata is one of those players. I can't believe he had a good game, but uh, it's pretty good that day. Um, I wonder if Simeone will uh, play with Griezmann. I know um, what's his name? I know Suarez is not playing, so I don't know. Maybe who Griezmann and Joao Felix, or uh, is it uh, Korea? Probably Korea. Uh, Simeone is beefing with Felix, so you know. I don't know who will blink first between the two. Felix plays, feels that he's not being used the right way, and Simeone feels that he's not adapting to how he wants to play. So um, there's just a bit going on there. My prediction: three-one uh, Atletico Madrid uh, with United. Uh, when they go back to Manchester, I believe Manchester United will beat them two-zero and. The game will go into extra time, and I don't know who will win after that. But that's my prediction, 3-1 for this game. About Pogba, uh, yes, I'll take Pogba. Uh, it's amazing how different a player he is when he's playing for Man United compared to um, France. Uh, which makes me believe that it's really how he's, he's managed and how he's used on the field. I think everyone knows how world-class Pogba was at Juventus. He's as close to Patrick Vieira as any other player I've ever seen. But, you know, the question is, how would he fit in at Chelsea? You know, if so, will Tuchel bring out the best in him? And what version of Pogba will Chelsea get? You know, Chelsea are having a history of very expensive flop so uh, i don't know it probably won't happen but it's definitely a good question to be honest i'd rather have one matter back at chelsea instead of uh, pogba but that's just me um so atleti versus man united let's see how it goes